Arise, champion! This is the world famous Steve Weatherford Show, where each week we bring you stories, messages, and guests to create massive breakthroughs in your life. Somebody say greatness! This show has been strategically designed to accelerate you. Call a friend and tell him Steve Weatherford is home. All right, guys. Welcome back with a, to another episode of the Steve Weatherford Show and back by extra popular demand is my wife, Laura Weatherford. Um, out of the two of us, she's the only one that has a college degree or a master's degree. I'm still working on that college degree. I'm nine credits short. So He's been nine credits short <laughs> since he was 23. As we sit here, I, di- I, mean, I digress to the expert. But oh, with that gosh. being said... We put some questions on Instagram story. We got a bunch of great responses. We were asking for questions or topics that we can answer on YouTube and the podcast. Mm -hmm. And this week we have a podcast and I want to make sure that I honor the question and the person that asked it. It's underscore let's go underscore C underscore. And her question is, how do I find my tribe as I level up in my marriage and in my life? My wife and I briefly talked about this um, beforehand, but we're really just going to wing it. That's what <laughs> that's what these uh, these episodes. I don't know if we're going to change the name of it this when we do this. No, these are just like question ones. We're not trying to like. We're just trying to answer people's questions how we do it without taking a lot of yeah, time. Yeah, we're to not. Yeah, we're we're not trying to like come up with a huge lesson. We're just trying to be like, oh, this is how we do it. Here you go. Okay, good. Well, we're gonna we're gonna tell you how we're doing it and my wife likes to call it winging it so how do i level up my tribe in my marriage and in life as you grow in marriage as i as you grow in marriage and in life i'm gonna i'm gonna start to answer this and then i'm gonna hand it to you because i believe the first thing that that for me as the spiritual leader in my home um, that i felt like i needed to do in order for the next level types of friends to even want to come into my world. If you want next level friends, this is what I wrote down. If you want next level friends, you have to level up, right? Okay, cool. That sounds really cute, Steve. I, I could have heard that somewhere else. Okay, well, let me unpack that a little bit. Working with a lot of men over these last three, three and a half years, um, I've noticed the most common and major gap for men, and this is what, this is the difference between an amateur and a pro level man. Amateurs make decisions based upon their feelings and pros make decisions based upon their commitments. Okay, that also sounds really quippy and cool, Steve, but what does it actually mean? How do I go pro in life? How do I go pro as a spiritual leader? How do I go pro as a man? You live by core values, right? And that was actually something that I never developed for myself. And then about four years ago, I started to work with a mentor and a coach. His name's Pastor Keith Kraft, and he taught me how to come up with my own personal core values. And so that's the first thing that you need to do if you want to level up your friends and you want to level yourself up is you need to figure out what it is that you value and what's important to you. And then once you decide what you're committed to, now you start making decisions based upon those commitments and not the feelings that you're having in that moment. And that's one of the ways that you're going to be able to consistently be a fruit producer. And that's the second part of going pro and, and leveling up your friends is leveling up yourself is get clear on who you are by identifying your personal core values. And after you identify your personal core values, begin to produce fruit in those values So I said those things, and now I feel like you can begin to unpack. Once people do that, what's the next phase of leveling up your friends as you're growing in marriage and in life? Because I just want to preface it with like, for me in marriage, the number one thing that I find is necessary for me to have a good, like long lasting, deep relationship with a friend is that we have like couple friends that we want to do life with. Mm -hmm. Because it allows us to take like our date night and also incorporate our friends. Yeah. But if I have a friend that I love and he maybe doesn't love the husband or vice versa. That's happened before. It's happened a lot. I mean, several times. Then it makes it difficult. You end up, at least in my situation, we've grown apart more Mm -hmm. because it doesn't give us that flexibility with time. 
Yeah. So that's one. And two, as a wife, um, at least in our situation, being able to use discernment mm. of like. Share a little bit more about that. So for Steve, he just loves people. And he always kind of sees the best and looks for the best. And I'm, if you looked at our, any like chart we've ever done, like personality charts for work, whatever, we're literally like this. We're as polar opposite as you can get. So although I would, I really would love to like see things like that. I'll just get like these overwhelming, like gut instinct of like, I don't like this person. Mm -hmm. And it's really hard for me to overcome that. Um, cause I'm not a really great faker either. So I'm mm -hmm. not like one of those people like, Oh my gosh, hi, how are you? And then like, Ugh, I don't like them. I'm just like, Oh, hello. And sure. then I'll just walk away. <laughs> share, share with the people that are, are listening and watching the discussion that we had. We had a, a 10 hour drive to, we actually went to go visit my wife's coach and mentor in Alabama yep. and we decided to drive cause it was just going to be him her and I and actually she just got me a brand new miniature long-haired wiener dog and I've wanted it for a long time that's a different story but yeah. we had a lot of time to talk would yeah. you share with them what we discussed that's on that topic yes so he, he always laughs at me at the people I choose he's like you picked this person to be <laughs> friends with and I or like if we're at a group like a party he'll be like, why did you choose that person and so I started thinking about, cause I don't really think about it. I'll be honest with you. That's never been like a, he's like, I look for core values. Like he does, like he does look for those things. But I think part of the reason he does that is because you've been burned a lot of times. Yeah. I need, I need a template for choosing he friends because I believe that everybody has like the best intentions and we've been, as I mean me, but, but we, as a result, we have we, been taken advantage yeah. of and damaged and being yeah. stolen from. And I, I never saw it coming. So, not, not any of the times. Right. So I was sitting there talking and he was like talking me through it mm -hmm. as to like, why? And I'm like, well, this person, I just like, they're nice, but I wouldn't like do life with them. I wouldn't mm -hmm. choose them. Mm -hmm. That's what I always say. I, for me, if I choose you, like I choose you, mm -hmm. but I don't choose that many people. So, um, I can unchoose you too, but <laughs> typically, Boy, I've seen typically her, I choose I've seen her to unchoose um, people and it's like a tactical move. They're like, oh, this is how you feel about me and that's what you're trying to do for my family. Okay. We're going to take you over here into the trash can. It's fine. I forgot about you. What was your name again? Cold as ice. And I I'm can. like, even if they steal from me and I know, no, I can I'm like, like remove them. We can give them another shot, right? No, I can remove them. <laughs> However, I'm a good mistake maker, so I've I've learned to I guess have some compassion to people that So make talking mistakes. about the way we think, it's great that we're married because he's like that and I am literally like, Well, this is a learning lesson. Mm. Like God put this before me so that I could learn. I need to learn from it or the same mistake will happen again. So I think that that's really why you put into core values. Our business coach, like Chris, he even just said, like, for people to be able to even be a part of our life, he wants them to go through a test with my discernment because mm -hmm. like we're at that, like we're at that point, but it's how honest are you with me? Like how real are you going to be with me? Cause I'll truly just like, I'll vomit life, mm -hmm. good, bad, and ugly. You really do have an incredible BS detector and so and it's never been wrong. It's never been wrong I about really people. Wish it had. Sometimes it's been wrong about like situations, mm -hmm. but I will say this, and that's one thing, if I can interject real, really quickly, is because we've learned that it's a beautiful thing that like I, I can't see the bad things right. in people from like a BS detector. So I'm always going to give everybody a chance and I'm always going to trust them until they give me a reason not to. So we've had to learn that, okay, Steve needs a template for choosing friends. They need to be core values based men mm -hmm. they need to be fruit producers and they need to be men that don't necessarily like need from steve sure they can benefit from steve but they can't be needers yeah i agree and so what i have found is the people that will open up their darkness and the people that won't judge me for mine mm. like i can tell them because i think some crazy things sometimes and if i can puke them out mm. and those people are like yeah I'm like, okay, you can be my person. Like, mm -hmm. if you can handle that, you can handle me. Like, I know that I can trust you with whatever comes my way. And it's actually very rare to find that. But the other thing that I think we get to realize, and this is you 
have this like more of an issue with it than I do, but we both do it. It's the people that are that are with you in the valley may not be with you in the mountain. And that's okay. Like God places relationships in your life for a purpose, but their purpose may not be the same as yours at the end of the day. Mm. And we also, it's really good, babe. Thanks for sharing that. We also made a list, mm. just a short list. We didn't really like think about it for a long time, but I said, babe, name a couple people <laughs> that you're really thankful for. And I'm not going to mention the names. No, because we don't want to forget people. <laughs> but there's some people on here that we just, we wrote down 10 names and we're like, okay, these are people that we feel like have leveled us up. Yeah, they've changed the trajectory of our family. And they've changed the trajectory of our family. And I'll go through the list. They've been a church men's group was one of them. Uh, a church men's event was another one. Um, a connection through a relationship from church, mm -hmm. um, which is your mentor. Um, uh, another church men's group. Uh, another connection from a relationship that was at church. Uh, a secular event. Yeah, that we're, came. We're, we're, we're naming Pierce. Pierce. Pierce, shout out to Pierce yeah, Shaw. We'll count You're you. You're the only one that's on the list. No, so is this one. But we met Pierce through that one. That was through a relationship. That was secular. Yeah, you're right. So there's two two people on here that came from secular places. One of them is Pierce Shaw. I'm so thankful that he's in our life. And and I believe that we're both collectively changing the tra tra trajectory of each other's families. And we're so thankful for him. He came into our life at a mountain climbing endurance event called 29029. And then... Then we went to that event, though, because of the relationship. Yeah. And I met Jesse Itzler is another relationship that I'm very thankful for. Um, and I met him while I was in a secular mastermind. Mm -hmm. um, and then you went to 29029 where you met Pierce because Jesse owns 29029. That's right. So, yep. uh, so speak to that, babe. What are your thoughts on that? And what are your wisdoms for... Those listening at home in probably two minutes. Two minutes? Yeah. Um, I mean, I do. If you want to take longer, you can. No, I was just thinking about it from a mom perspective because this is how I would explain it. Because it's, I think people, f they talk about it with kids a lot and then they forget that it's the same. <laughs> but who your kids hang out with is really important because if they get in with the wrong crowd, the wrong things happen. Mm. And you don't want them to get in a path of drugs and and sex and, and just all of that junk that we all fight through in the world. So that's why we like, we would choose to put our kids in private Christian school and hoping that the parents have the same values and the schools teaching the same values. So it, we're like partnering with people instead of just sending them to school for academics. Mm -hmm. I would say the same is true as you get older. It doesn't really change. Like who you surround yourself with is who matters. So where do you go to find those people? And it's usually, I mean, we have found it's been church. Mm -hmm. It's been meeting through other relationships, mm -hmm. even if those relationships came from church. Like the people that we have in our life right now, 100% have been because we feel like God gave that alignment. So where do you go to seek God? Mm. I have one more question for you. Mm -hmm. In the season of life that you're in right now, what are three things that you're looking for in a family or in a woman that would cause you to pursue them in relationship? Mm. A family or a woman. Yeah, you can answer either or. You can choose some um, three <laughs> things that would work for both. Why don't you say well, for, a, for, a, for a woman? Why don't you just, why don't you say these are the three things? Because that's something that I think is fresh and new for you. Right, because typically, why don't you share with them typically how you choose a friend? Like typically they, they show you something and then you're like, oh, I can trust you and I can be friends with you. So yeah, I guess it would be one, how they, how they come across. Like for me, I am like a gut person. So like. So the vibe that you pick up? The initial, the initial meeting is really important to me. Mm. I can be swayed. But if my initial reaction is, eh, if it goes sideways on the f on the first time you meet him, it's it's going to be an uphill battle. They got a low percentage so chance of being your friend, huh? I think the realness is very important, which is it's really interesting because I've been talking a lot about this with like different areas that we've lived. 
New Jersey was the realest. To share with people that maybe don't know us at all. This is the so first we've, show. we've lived all over the country. So we gr- I grew up in Illinois. He did kind of, well, more of your life in Louisiana, but Louisiana, Indiana. We lived in New Orleans. We lived in New Jersey. We lived in California. Jacksonville. And Jacksonville, Florida. And Kansas then, City. Well, that, I don't count that. And then I Texas. Mean, hey, we paid taxes in Kansas That's City. That's true. Um, and New Jersey is real. They're very real people, but it's hard. Man, it's hard to make friends there because they're super like tight knit and loyal and they don't like outsiders that much from what I have experienced, but they're real people. Like they give it to you. Um, once you get in with the people from, from Jersey, especially the Italian folks. Yeah. They love you. But and once you're in, they treat you like they, they, you got their last name. <laughs> yeah. Hey, shout out to the nappies and the Delators. Yes, exactly. And then California was super more, I guess I would say if you're going with the vibes, babe, more my vibe. Like yeah. they're very like earthy, I holistic. Think that, I think it's a good place for you because you're a worrier and like the vibe yeah. out there is slow down, relax and be present. Well, and should I state California as in San Diego, yeah. not all of California? Cause yeah. I don't think it's all like that, but I actually have found people in the South to be the least, I was talking to Dylan about this, the least like real. Mm. And it, it's not because the, they're not awesome people but they're so sweet and like, oh, bless your heart. Like, oh, bless your little heart. And like, they just, they want everyone to be joy filled. And like, they're more, probably more like you, like they see the best in things. So because of that though, they won't even like speak yeah, sometimes, the realness sometimes. Sometimes, sometimes. They're, sometimes they're just acting and you're. Yes. You're, Cause everyone has ish. So like, if you're not willing to share it for me, like, I guess that would be, so if you wanted three really easy ones, share your ish. Mm. Let me share mine. <laughs> and, um, yeah, I mean, those would be the two probably main ones. I'm going to try to help you put a third one on it because I think there's one there for you. So I thought there was, but I don't remember. You're looking, you're looking for relationships that, that will hold the bag mm-hmm. and, and a relationship that will let you hold their bag. You know what? I think you, you can already, I can already talk about it with Courtney. Like I can call, I need them to let me share it mm-hmm. and I need them to support me and like moving forward past it. Because mm. if you have someone that you just both sit there and share it all day, yeah. you then do you not, it then you it stew in it and you get, you like, so my friend Courtney is very good about that. Like I can talk to her. Mm-hmm. She does not get emotional on my behalf, which is amazing. Mm-hmm. And then she can be like, well, really like what's what's the worst case scenario Mm. and like how is it really affecting you like i understand it makes you sad but like at the end of the day Mm. like this is what it is so so i'm hearing you say somebody that you can vent to that will vent to you and then somebody that will help you to choose wisdom in a solution yes Mm. i think that's the end of our show I'm going to say a quick prayer. If this show is um, helpful for you, man, I sure would love if you're watching it on YouTube to give us a thumbs up and to su- su- subscribe, su- 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 subscribe, remix. And um, and then if you're listening to it on Spotify or Apple Podcasts, when you leave a review, that helps us too, man. Let me pray for us. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. God, thank you for uh, the opportunity to just record a conversation, God. And and because your hand is on it, that God, that, that a seed can be planted that can shift and change everything um, in a man or a woman's life and, and impact their family in a supernatural way. We just thank you for our family. We ask that your hand would continue to be upon us and upon everybody that's hearing my voice. We thank you and we praise you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.